gonna be taking a look at the results out of Philly, some more interesting little things that people are talking about in the format here, and well, th there's a lot to unpack for this video. For those of you that missed out on the Food Wars bundle, I've been asked by a lot of people to restock things. Well, we're gonna do something a little bit different here. We're gonna be making a deck box here. Now, the reason why it's so expensive is it does come with a field center, and it is a gem deck box. These will ship in the fall, and we will actually have the front of these designed, I would say, probably in the next two to three weeks for this. So it's going to be a very, very small run, a lot less than a lot of people are very used to. But I'll leave a link down below so you can grab yours today. I'll be like the 30% of you that have not smashed the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so you guys don't miss out more on this content. Ah, YCS Philadelphia, the irrelevant elephant in the room here. Uh, top 64 breakdown. 26 cash tier. Eh, don't care. It's irrelevant now. 12 super heavy samurai. Well, scarecrow's ban. Okay, that's cool. Six labyrinth. It's actually kind of a little bit of an impressive turnover number, honestly. Um, the fact that uh, going into next format here, I think labyrinth's going to have a very interesting place here. Uh, purely also got bonked here with only four showing in top cut here, which I think is also kind of interesting. Uh, we all. I'm gonna. Somebody's gonna be like Robbie. I'm gonna be drunk by the end of the video because of all the things you say, it's interesting. Turnover and conversion rates are interesting. Data is always interesting to see. We also had four Despia. Oh boy. Um, enjoy expulsion while you have it. We had two Eldritch players. Where have you all been my entire life? Why is it because Labyrinth also got in? You guys were like, oh boy, you Labyrinth crushed them, and then Eldritch player played them next round. And they're like, no, I'm out. I, I, I physically, I, I can't deal with this. Uh, we had two Gold Pride Punk. Uh, shame that they just lost Gamma. We had two Flanderies. You know, I uh, I will say it. I think that, you know, Flander kind of is still doing its thing out here. Is very, very good. We only had one Math Mech player. You know, the evil that was circular has been taken care of now. We, we don't have to deal with this anymore, but... You only had one at the end of the deck's life. That is so horrendous, considering where we were, you know, literally last format, where Mathemech was just a crazy deck. Wow. Uh, we had a Runic player. Hi, Runic player. I'm happy for you. We also had Dynamorphia. You know, as much as, as, much as we'll say it, all right, Dynamorphia out here getting the chance to do its thing. Not all that surprising. All right, Dynamorphia still got some shenanigans. As much as players look at this deck and they're like, oh, you know, like, Rexstrom's easy to out. I mean, sometimes Rexstrom is easy to out, but other times it's not. And we also had a Tier Elements player make top cut. Wow. <laughs> Actually, I, I think I'm very much impressed that Tier was able to, you know, make it in to the top cut of this event. I incredible, incredible, incredible. And then we also had a Sprite player make it in as well. Is, is that only one Sprite deck in the entire void of this? Sprite is now as bad as Mathemech, looking at the conversion data for this. Uh, that's uh, that's not good. Um, Sprite's power creep level has been pretty bad up, up to this stage. So, you know, when the dial back takes place... That's interesting. So that's your breakdown for Philly. Luckily for us here, there were a couple deck lists that popped out of the YCS here that actually are still conversionably legal for the new list. And I actually want to talk about some of these as well here. So the first list you're going to be seeing here is Eldlich sporting off uh, mini Kaiju package. Yes, we are playing, you know, standard filtering options here, but you're also going to notice in here that we're playing Draco Utopian Aura in here as well. Now, something else that's kind of interesting here is the inclusion of Silent Wobby. By actually abusing Silent Wobby's effect, you can hand it over to your opponent and lock your opponent underneath, you know, Rivalry of Warlords or goes. And this is actually kind of an incredibly interesting interaction for what you can actually kind of do in the game here. Now, we're also playing some destructive Daruma cannons here as well. Don't underestimate the value that you're going to get with this card. I think a lot of people tend to look at this card and they're like, well, you know, like, is there, is it really something that I need to, you know, be worried about playing in this format? Honestly, yes. Um, you need to be able to basically have outs to immediately everything. And that's something that this card does, in fact, give you. Um, we also have 
As for our Eldritch Traps, uh, we're only playing two Huguero. I think a lot of people will agree that Huguero's like, usefulness has fallen to the wayside. Like the, the card is still incredibly good, but it just it doesn't feel like it does anywhere near the level that it needs to do at this stage. So very interesting. And then of course we have Super Poly here. Uh, you'll be able to, you know, essentially make anything down here in the extra deck that you need. Obviously this might adjust in the future here, depending on how, you know, the list tends to develop. But uh, you have a very good strong base here. And I mean, especially when you're seeing Utopian Draco Aura here, being a little card that you can actually see play with here in the format. I think that's impressive. Also, I mean, to be fair, like Anytime Eldritch actually does something, it's usually a pretty good indicator of, you know, maybe the format is developing in some interesting ways, or maybe buy steals just weren't present enough over the weekend. I do give Eldritch a lot of crap because I'm like, hey, you know, like, you're a giant walking, talking buy steal magnet, all right? Like, literally, big guy, or big good old giant lord here just gets flown away by, you know, Magna Hut, any of... Our dear friends, Saren here, it's, it's really a rough, hard time to recover. So, interesting to see that. Now, next up here was a top 32 Flandries list. Now, straight off the bat here, the first thing that I notice is we are, we're still playing Shifter, as you should be. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, um, Shifter still is an incredibly good card, especially... Kind of going forward here, if Kashira kind of takes that step back out of the format here, well, people are going to have to have some sort of developments out here um, to kind of give consideration to what the deck needs to do. Uh, I also actually find this kind of interesting. The fact that we have had Dark Ruler No More's in this deck. Honestly, Dark Ruler No More has been one of the best cards that Flandries players have held on to out here. And standard board breaker, the ability to break apart things, is pretty good. I'm also kind of curious to know if uh, Droll's going to stick around, especially in a deck like this. You know, Droll, its entire purpose was if you ran into the Super Heavy Samurai matchup, you get to paralyze him. Also, I mean, to be fair, this card right here won your Super Heavy matchup for you. Literally clean. Like, your opponent saw this card, they went, nope. I'm out. Too good five me. Like, literally. It was a free auto win button against your opponent. And then, of course, there's still the Harpy's Feather Duster um, auto win button as well. Um, call it what it is at this stage. I still think that Harpy's Feather Storm is still literally one of the best things that you can do with this deck. Um, also, this deck is playing Dimensional Fissure. Um, this is actually kind of interesting. Uh, Dimensional Fissure also makes sure that if you don't see the shifter, if you're going first, you now have six cards to basically start setting up Banishing-esque effects. Um, and I actually think that's kind of relevant right now, um, especially going forward. I think this card might actually see a lot of play. Uh, I mean, the extra deck, um, I mean, matters about as much as, you know, Assemble Knight gilling up. Uh, but that's, I mean, also, you know, talenting into Steel the Rise Heart. I mean, you got a lot of cute little things you can do. Also, shout out to the big ball itself. Still being one of the best little individualized board breakers that you can actually pack into the deck. So I'm, I'm incredibly happy to see that, you know, this did good. Now, out of the UK, there was this uh, interesting little Rika Sun Avalon deck. Um, I am not the greatest analyzer of Rika Sun Avalon technologies out here, but what I can tell you about this deck is the fact that this card right here is very, very strong. Now, uh, Crossout Disney, honestly, uh, I wouldn't be surprised kind of going forward here, depending on how the new format shapes up, that if you start to be worried about hand traps a lot more, this is going to curve things out for you. Uh, Rika Sun Avalon's biggest issue is uh, this card right here. Followed by this card. Actually, followed by this card, <laughs> any sort of hand trap, is a huge deterrent for this deck. And the fact that you have counterplay for this is good. This answers your Arise Heart problem that you had, which, congratulations, you now have even more access to. And then, you know, this just kind of <laughs> does shenanigans against the opponent. Uh, down here in the extra deck, <laughs> wow. They are gone so far down the paradigm here for being worried about, you know, Shifter. I mean, obviously, like, if you see Shifter and you chain Cross out, um, your opponent just looks at you and goes, 
wow, you know, you really are that good at the game to have the counter pick. And you, you kind of need it, honestly. Um, shout out here to Droll Knockbird as well. So, yeah, they do board in the other Droll of Nibi, and they also board in, you know, additional ashes. Um, they, they adjust their hand trap ratio very, very nicely, depending on the matchup. Uh, we have some board breakers in here, and I mean, the extra deck for this deck, uh, you you get like zero room for innovation. I mean, you might have one tech slot, but I don't foresee it. Like, this is one of the tightest extra decks to decide your skill trees that you're going to go on. And if you mess up something along the way, there's not really much of a recovery for it. I mean, that's the cost of, you know, the Sun Avalon package being as large as it is in terms of numbers. So, that is our breakdown and everything thoughts for these events. Who oh, we please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.